Every week around about this time, we uh, drop in on Sue Murphy to get some recommendations about what you should be watching, what's new, what's old, what's the update. Sue Murphy, good morning to you. How are you? Hi, how are you? Good. We're well, starting with what's new this week. Yes. Um, the big one, well, the one that I've been watching over the last week is Your Honour, which is the Brian Cranston um, new, it's, about, it's 10 episodes. I kind of, I'm over and back about how I feel about this because I've watched two episodes now and I, it, like, I, it's very similar in some ways to Breaking Bad because it's that kind of idea of what would a dad do to protect his family and protect his kids. So his son, Adam, kills a, a kid on a motorbike called Rocco Baxter, who's the son of Jimmy Baxter, a local mob boss. And uh, he decides in his wisdom that he's going to protect him and uh, he's not going to bring him down to the police station. He's not going to uh, turn him over. And it's kind of this idea of like, how far would you go for your kid? Because he's a judge and a kind of really renowned local judge um, who's well liked to uh, really roots for the people that it, like goes well out of his way in the first episode to help a woman who's been accused of something. And it's, it's fine. Like it's it's perfectly watchable, and I've watched two episodes, and I keep going. But it's not there's no depth to it, if that makes sense. It's very like he, Brian Cranston's judge character is very I'm a very good man, and the Jimmy Baxter character is I'm a very bad man, and I like that might change across the course of the episodes as well. To like I imagine his character will change to protect his kid, but the first that's what I felt about it. It was just kind of like a bit flat. Which yeah. was a bit disappointing. There's a lot of that around at the moment. There's loads of like very well produced. And when you were like, oh, the costumes are great. Remember we had that, I was like, yeah, at least they can expect it that everything is going to be good. And there's so much stuff now like this where um, so much money has gone in. The production values are really high. <laughs> the costume design is excellent. The lighting is incredible. It's just boring. And I haven't seen this, <laughs> right? But there's loads of just boring yeah. stuff out there. Like that nonsense with Hugh Grant and Nicole Kidman that you got sucked into is like, it all oh, it looks really pretty, but it was shite, ultimately. It was a complete waste of time. <laughs> yeah, like, and I got to the end of that, I was like, well, that was a waste of time. <laughs> yes, but there's a lot of that stuff out there. Like, I, I, the night of was supposed to be, you know, um, uh, searing questions about the relationship between race and America at the moment. Like, there's loads of other better stuff that's already done this in a more interesting way. This is just like... I gave up on the night off. 15 episodes, really too much. It, it, and exactly. Yeah. Like... So I don't know, that's why these recommendations are quite important. I, I, I mean, it's your job to watch the end of your honour, but uh, until you get to the end and go, oh, you know what, it really turned around, I'm like, nah, no thanks. I'm, uh, there's loads of other good stuff out there. <laughs> I mean, that's fine. I, I feel like I'm doing it a bit of a disservice. I think people who, you see, Brian Cranston is just great, like, and he's, imp like, he's impossible not to like in absolutely everything he's in, no matter how bad he is. Well, go and watch so... Malcolm in the Middle. Like, get it on YouTube. Go and watch Malcolm in the Middle. If you want some Brian Cranston fix, go and watch Malcolm in the Middle. It's sensational. Poor Brian Cranston. Um, I'd say the other one is probably more up your street than this week. Uh, Last Chance Youth Basketball. Um, they have... So they, the first five seasons... I'm, I'm sure you guys have seen this, have you? I've seen... I, like, I watched the first one and then I couldn't go back to it. The really? first episode, I... I yeah. First I, season. I, 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 our first season. I've only seen one episode of this thing and it was really good and again one of those it was one of those things where life got in the way and then it wasn't high enough up on the list of the pandemic stuff so I've only ever seen one episode of this but it, it was really good and uh, I get I get it Maybe Yeah I'm obsessed with it I just I absolutely loved like I I actually gave up on the third season because I felt like all of the players had become too aware of the cameras and were kind of playing up to a little bit whereas I felt like in the first season in particular they just it was very fly in the wall document documentary but they they've moved now they had uh, five seasons which are mississippi kansas and california and now they've gone to um basketball so it's the huskies is the name of the team and they're east the uh, east los angeles college but they're run by this coach called john mosley and honestly you will watch it for this guy alone he is i don't know where they get these coaches from these guys are just insane and they're pushing these kids to the absolute limit like one of the kids is like I mean, I only get Christmas off. <laughs> like, they're really just making sure that they, like, because they're a level below, obviously, getting into college football and they're trying to get scholarships. So they're really pushing these kids to make sure they're able to submit all of their reports, that they're showing up on time, they're showing up to all of their practices. And you kind of end up rooting for those characters because they really are, like, the captain of the team 
has lost his mother to cancer. His father had died the year before. It's just like really sad stories of really like really deprived kids who end up in these amazing programs where they have structure and they have responsibility and they have these amazing coaches who root root for them. And I just find it impossible not to like. I like every time I get watch DC, I'm just about happy with it and I'm like, yeah, I want to adopt all of these children and fair play to these guys who are looking after them. Because it really just shows up the other side of it, the tracks around around college football, around football, which is such a massive, massive business in the States, you know? Yeah. I mean, it, it also serves just, to highlight how broken American society is. And my, absolutely. I definitely have a voyeuristic difficulty with this. It's like, for my entertainment, these children have been ghettoized, had their lives ruined by, uh, you know, centuries of oppression. And now Netflix is hooking me in and saying I should watch this as entertainment. Yeah, I understand where you're coming from, but at the same time, does it not like highlight that? Don't and know. does it not show? I think it leeches off it, to be honest. Oh. So I think it's like, it's like, because um, nothing's going to change from these shows. Ultimately, that college, uh, that Juco college football program in Mississippi in the first season didn't really change. That that head coach didn't really change. He got a bit famous, and he makes more money from appearances, and maybe his recruitment is a bit easier or a bit harder, depending on whether or not people liked him. But ultimately, I don't think these programs are any way an agent of change. I actually think that they're just leeching off the poorest of society and saying, so here's this, here's this tragic story. Of the think, yeah, like, I think they just show an aware, like, they highlight, they, they give an awareness to these situations. Because I think a lot of people who watch these games outside of America maybe wouldn't be familiar with the ins and outs of how these kids end up in the NFL or, you know, the NBA. They might think, oh, these guys, these guys just want these guys really work their asses off to get to this point. I mean, there's one bit where one of the guys is sitting there and he's like, I don't want to do this report. And they're like, they've been training all day. They've been up since six o'clock in the morning. I, I just think it really highlights what they have to go through to get to that level. And it's not easy. And I don't know. I don't think that really takes advantage. Of it. I think it I think it really pushes them into the spotlight. Sheehan. Yeah, I'm kind of with Sue on this as well. I am i don't really feel the sense of voyeurism that goes on with this. Maybe that just uh, speaks to my morality being in a worse place and maybe I just don't have uh, the moral compass that, that other people have. But I've, I've never really felt that I'm like, this is uh, a lot of these stories. You just turned shade at me for having a moral compass. Uh, that was <laughs> de definitely done there, Owen. Good man. Right, move on. <laughs> Poor Owen. Um, sorry. I've seen the, one episode of the thing. Like, I mean, co coming to me for like the definitive sort of uh, <laughs> moral tone on this. I've seen one episode. I don't know, but I didn't. I didn't feel guilty watching <laughs> it. I just didn't watch it because I didn't have time. It's okay. to do with my okay. sense of guilt. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> What's next, Sue? <laughs> no, no, there. Uh, the Comey rule. Uh, this is on now TV at the moment, and I uh, like it was on Sky last year. It picked up a lot of nominations. Golden Globe nomination for Brenda Gleeson. Um, I think Jeff Daniels got a nomination as well for playing James Comey. It's two episodes. It's very long. It's, I think it's about three hours. Like, it's basically feature-length episodes. This is... Re I really liked it. Now, the music the reviews of this have been a little bit mixed. I think it comes down... Like, it's based on Comey's book. So it's very forgiving of a lot of the things that Comey had, had done. And it's the lead-up to the 2016 election and his investigation into Hillary Clinton, which they talk about, and some of the stuff about Trump and the Russian investigation... But there's a, an amazing scene, like the whole thing is worth watching for this scene where Comey gets called to the White House by Trump for a dinner and Trump basically demands his loyalty. But the tension, like it's just the two of them sitting at a table and it's a very long scene and you can tell how uncomfortable Comey is. He doesn't want to be there. He doesn't want to have this conversation. And Gleason, Brenda Gleason is absolutely phenomenal in that scene. It's so, so good. But I like I had to keep reminding myself that it wasn't fact because every time like they gave an explainer for what had happened or what happened with the Hillary investigation, and I was like, oh, that's what happened there. No, Susan, this is, this is fiction. This is based on a book. You had to keep reminding yourself because it's very, very close to the events. Like, you'd have to look very hard to find out what parts there are wrong. You'd have to know the story inside out because it is very intricate. And they give you a lot of, a lot of information. But I actually, I really enjoyed the performances. And I think if you're into... American politics or anything like that, you'll, you'll really appreciate this. Okay, so the Comey rule, I haven't seen it, on of you? No, I haven't either, to be honest. Okay. Very good. Uh, Honestly, very good. Uh, how's, how's your rewatch of The Wire going on? 
really well. This is, I know we're kind of out of time here, but this is so much better on the rewatch. And the first watch was like one of the best television experiences of all time. I didn't enjoy episode one that much. First time I watched it, second time I watched it back. I'm still on season one, by the way. It was sensational. I've gone back to look at how it was received at the time, though, to see if other people weren't blown away by it the first time. New York Times, and this is a really cold take that's, that, that's come back up for them. Their review of the initial season of The Wire. This is from the New York Times. The show seems to go out of its way to be chopping and confusing, not giving viewers the traditional this is who and what's what opening. It's all served up in a dialogue heavy with police speak and dealer speak, sometimes unintelligibly so. The language is supposed to be realistic, and maybe it is realistic, but it often feels self-conscious, like an overly thick southern accent. And this is the killer line. The Wire doesn't have the pulsating, addictive urgency of 24, which just completed a spectacular first season on Fox. It shows us a more realistic version of life, complete with downtime, yak sessions, drunken story swapping. What did I say a couple of weeks ago when Star came into our lives? You've got to get on 24. Uh, New York Times says it here, 24 is better than The Wire. I am vindicated. Uh, this may be a terrible take on The Wire, but I'm happy that 24 is coming out I better. can't believe you managed to bring 24 into a conversation about The I didn't Wire. Do it. I didn't do it. The New York Times, one of the, new, the world's most no, famous newspaper. it's so far it. away from The Wire. <laughs> Awful. <laughs> better, better first season than than the wire, according to people who know what they're talking about too. So I'm, who am I to? Well, that's uh, to just blatant that. lie. I actually went back. I'm on second episode, but I mean, it's much. It's even better on the rewatch. I mean, I watched this on a, a projector screen the first time I watched it, and I forgot how good it actually looks when it's on a really good screen. But no, that's just lie zone. We've been taken in. How? Who wrote uh, that on? Do you know? <laughs> oh God, I I will uh, copy and paste uh, this into Google. Doesn't away. matter. I, I don't know, but no, honestly, anybody who has watched The Wire only once, like like I had done the second time, is just so much more satisfying. The uh, author on that piece, by the way, is Neil Genslinger. Right. The Omar Levy scene in the courtroom was on Sky Atlantic last night, and uh, you can't not watch it because it's an absolute classic. Stone Cold, you can also drop in and out of any episode, pretty much, and go, oh, I forgot that happened, because as the intricacy is the thing that makes it stand up. We'll talk in more detail about that a little bit later on. If you've got any views on the wire, you want to talk about it, 0879-180-180 is the number. OTBAM live in association with Gillette. Good morning, start with Gillette, giving you the confidence to tackle the day ahead. Uh, there was one other thing that you wanted to talk about, Sue, was there? Um, the... Oh, just Bake Off. I just wanted to have a rant about Bake Off because I think a lot of people are watching it and no fielding's not involved and they need to just stop, I think. They need to stop making Bake Off. That's it. <laughs> it's over. Bake Off is over. It's Jump the Shark. It's sure, like, I mean, it's Matt Lucas presented at the moment, and it's a special one for cancer, stand up to cancer. So I'd have to give into it because, it, like, you have to run the charity stuff, obviously. But anytime they're, like, they've just moved presenters too many times, and they're really overdoing some of the edits on it. And I just, like, I think people are just starting to get a bit bored with it, which is really disappointing. Because it's one thing that's been getting people through lockdown is just, like, nice programs that don't actually demand too much of you. <laughs> Oh, are you a Bake Off fan? Yeah, I do. I do like Bake Off. I like it's. I'm not on the the level of having an in depth um, knowledge of it that Sue has. Like I, I've only dipped in and out of it whenever it's on, like more for or something like that. Like it's such a good show. It it it, it is the one the ultimate easy watch out there. Like I'm I'm surprised to hear such a, such a take though that that Bake Off should should be pulled because no matter who it is, like I know Noel Fielding was great and all that, and the preview like all the different casts they've had have have been quite good. I thought. I, I just think the format itself is bigger than any one individual. I thought the original chemistry was good. I haven't, I'm just getting sick of it. I haven't gone back to it. <laughs> so you're saying Noel Fielding's no good? Oh, no, Noel Fielding is great. Right, you but both the think he's great. Okay. Yeah, yeah they had Noel and Sandy who were presenting it. And they Sandy's left, and now they have Noel Fielding with Matt Lucas. And that took a while because it's really hard when you're a real Bake Off fan to really bed in with the new people. And then Noel kind of disappeared out just before Christmas because they were doing specials and there was just Matt. And like, I, I know he's going to be back for the next season, but I feel like there's a kind of a wedge now. There's a All problem. Right. All right. Martin Furlong on YouTube says, I watched the first four episodes of The Wire. I just can't get into it. It's nowhere near the quality of shows like The Sopranos. It's pretty close. I would argue The Sopranos is still slightly ahead of uh, The Wire and I'm nearly I'm, I'm back on season four of The Wire. Um, uh, but we'll we'll have yeah. that debate. Don't worry, that's coming down the tracks. That's uh, we're going to clear the decks for that one and do it properly. OTBM live in association with Gillette. Good morning, start with Gillette. Give me the confidence to tackle the day ahead. Thanks for that, Sue. 